Hello again. This is Nigel from Mad About Animals. Before I go any further, I'd just like to say that in this video, I will be making reference to um, sexual violence and racial violence. So just a bit of a trigger warning there. Those things cause you any distress and I suggest you don't watch this anymore. Although there's going to be no graphic content or anything like that. So in this video, I'd like to talk about what we feed to our loved ones, to our friends and relatives. I've seen a lot of posts on social media recently about someone who's vegan and their children or their partner, their special ones, their friends are not vegan and they prepare food for them. So they're having a barbecue or a family meal or something like that and they prepare non-vegan food for their friends, families, children, their loved ones. And their rationale seems to be, well, I can't force my veganism on somebody. And if they want to carry on eating animals, drinking milk, eating eggs, that sort of thing, then that's their personal choice. Well, as vegans, we all know that the personal choice as a victim isn't really a personal choice, but that's not what this video is about. What this video is about is how we should treat that type of situation. So if I'm having a barbecue, or if I'm having friends round and a friend says, look, Nigel, I know you're vegan and I know you're going to do a fully vegan barbecue, but do you mind if I just bring a steak along? You know, we can separate it on the, on, on the barbecue. So all the vegan stuff is at one side and the meat stuff, my meat stuff is at the other side. All I'm asking you to do is put it on your barbecue, cook it for me and then I'll eat it. I won't make a big deal about it or anything like that, but just respect my choice. What's my answer to that? No, no, I won't. I won't respect your choice. I won't let you come to my barbecue, my home, and bring animal products and expect me to cook them for you. You're right, it is a personal choice, and I can't force you to go vegan, but at the same time, you have to respect my personal choice not to want to prepare those products. It goes against my ethics, it goes against my morality. Quite often in this sort of situation, I like to take animals out of the equation and put something else in. It's a good way of checking the morality of what you're doing to make sure you're not being speciesist. So this is where the trigger one is coming. So imagine a group of friends said to me, Nigel, we're going out later on and we're gonna beat up some black guys. Now, I know you're no longer racist and we accept that you're not racist and we don't want to encourage you to be racist, but we're still racist and it's our choice. We've decided we want to go beat up some black guys and we want you to come along. We accept you're not going to beat up the black guy, but can you just hold his arms behind his back so as we punch him, it'd be easier. Now, what would I say to that? What would you say to that? Of course you'd say no. Of course you say, what the f*** are you thinking about? You don't beat up people just because of the colour of their skin. You wouldn't go with them, you wouldn't enjoy it, you wouldn't encourage them. you try your best to discourage them in the terms of a racist assault like that. That is actually illegal, so you would be able to report them to the authorities, unlike animal abuse. Similarly, a group of friends said to me, Nigel, look, we know that you're not sexist anymore. Maybe you used to be. Maybe you used to be sexist with your friends. We know that you're not sexist anymore, but we're going out to pick up some women and we're, we're going to take in turns with them. Oh, they might object, but if there's half a dozen of them, if there's half a dozen of us and one of them, then, you know, it'll be fine. Now, we're not asking you to rape her because we know that you're, you're not into rape and that's not your thing and you appreciate that women shouldn't be raped and that that's against your morals and your ethics. But if you just held her down, it might make that a bit easier for us. What do you think I'd say to that? Same answer, isn't it? Cos, cos I'm not going to help you rape someone. What the hell do you think I am? And you shouldn't be raping anyone either. And again, similar to the racial thing, this is illegal. So not only am I going to not participate 
in this activity. Not only am I going to discourage you as much as I can from doing it, if you do persist and do it, I'm going to report you. Again, similarly to the racial thing, we can't do that with animals because animal abuse is not illegal. So going back to animals now, putting this back into context. Nigel, I know you're having a dinner party, but I know you're doing a full vegan menu, but if I just, I'll cook it myself. I'll just bring some animal. I'll just bring my own meat goulash or whatever. And if you could just warm it up for me. No, not gonna do that even. I'm not gonna participate in your species behavior. I'm not gonna encourage you or allow you to abuse animals or consume abused animal products at my dinner party, at my barbecue. It's not happening. Now I get that if you've only just gone vegan, maybe you've only been vegan a year or two years and your partner and even your children who you raised to be non-vegan before you went vegan, they still want to consume animal products. And I get that that's difficult. But if you're with a partner who says, oh, I'm going to cut on eating mate. And obviously you've tried everything. You've tried to get them to see your morality. You've tried to get them to see what you have seen, why you went vegan and they're still not getting it. They should at the same time respect your views, respect your morality and not even ask, let alone expect you to do those things which are going to cause you mental anguish, not to mention the cruelty and suffering that it's going to bring to the animals that they're asking you to cook. So don't feel guilty for saying no. You wouldn't feel guilty for saying no to a friend who was asking you to be racist or sexist or homophobic or Islamophobic. Well, someone's choice to eat meat does have an impact. It impacts on the animals. It impacts on the environment. It impacts on us all. So why should a loved one, no matter how loved, your closest partner, your husband, your wife, your soulmate in every other way who is no longer, is not vegan and can't see why you should be vegan. They should respect you. Just don't accept it. We don't have to accept it. My youngest son still lives with me. Despite all my best efforts, he isn't vegan yet. Do I cook him non-vegan food? Nope. Do I buy him non-vegan food? Nope. Two or three years ago, he would call me up and say, Dad, on your way home from work, can you get some milk, please? What was my answer? Nope. Get you some plant milk. Won't get you some dairy milk. But Dad, you're passing the shop. Dad, you're even going into the shop. Yep. Well, just get me some milk. Nope. I can't stop him, but I can't help him. I won't help him. I won't encourage him. If he wants to drink milk or eat eggs, he can go to the shop himself. He knows I love him, but he knows I won't put up with that sort of thing. I won't be complicit in it. It's against my morals. He doesn't love me any less. You don't have to fall out with the person that you love. If you've got different ethics or different morality to someone, it's not ideal, but you can still love them. You can still get on with them. You don't have to fight about it, but you have to be firm about it. That's against my morality. I am not going to do it. Dad, get me some milk. No, and you know why. It's not hard, don't have to be nasty, just be firm. Thank you. I've been Nigel from Mad About Animals. If you enjoyed this, found it informative or helpful, please like, share and subscribe and watch out for the next video. Thank you.